Episode 12, Montana Ryan here, and uh, happy that you guys are joining along, or just happy if you're popping your head in and saying what's up. Feel free to heckle, right? Makes things a little bit more interesting than me just kind of like running my mouth and taking you through a bunch of exercises that, I don't know, maybe you know about them already, maybe you don't, but either way, uh, feel free to ping with some questions, comments. Uh, the more that you guys can join along, the better. Right, so um, I ran into a gentleman the other day and he was talking about joining uh, my class because he wanted to be uh, a little bit more flexible and wanted to work on his flexibility and wasn't really quite sure how to like proceed with that. So today's class is gonna be all about like getting the body to become a little bit more flexible. And the unfortunate thing is it's not just about stretching more, it's really about uh, getting your body to remember that pattern. So. Uh, I'm gonna take you through all that stuff today and I'll kind of, you know, explain why and how and all that stuff and we're gonna work our way from the bottom up and then we'll finish up. I had another request for some stomach work so we'll make sure we get some good stomach training in there. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So uh, we're gonna work from the bottom up, okay? So um, let's go ahead and start uh, seated. I want you to take the, uh, the I guess the, uh, what do you call this? The palm? Not the palm, but... Yeah, this part right here. The muscle part of your... I guess so. I you know, know. kind of like where you, where the meaty part of your the palm, right? So right. what we're going to do is we're going to use that and we're going to just massage our calves, right? So a big trend in fitness right now is like foam rolling, stick work, right? And like, why is that so important? Why is that um, important for you to incorporate that in your training? Good question, right? So... Um, it's important for you guys to do this because what it does is it gets the muscle to basically, you're bypassing the muscle's safety, right? You have this thing called a muscle spindle. Every muscle fiber has it, and it's basically a safety. So by massaging, and you can even see I'm using the, uh, the meaty part of my palm, I'm even kind of pinching my calf. I'm not crushing it, I'm just, you know, you know loosening it up, right? So I'm bypassing that safety, and what I'm gonna do after I bypass this safety is gonna, I'm gonna take it into a stretch. I'm not gonna go past a seven on that scale of one to 10 because I'm you know, allowing my body to go potentially beyond its, its comfortable limit. And then we're gonna do a resistance training exercise with it, okay? So we're not gonna move to the other side, we're actually gonna get right into it. So I massage, I bypass that, that muscle safety, and we're gonna do a calf stretch. Okay, let's maybe try it standing. And if you guys can't, uh, find this stretch uh, with some of these positions I'm taking you through, I can show you some alternatives. So you find it? Uh, I think so. So go ahead. Not as drastic as like, you know, maybe doing... Like a stair or something yeah. like that. So yeah. maybe try to rotate that back flip so it's just good. And then, yeah, see how I bent my back leg? Yeah. Right? And that should exaggerate that stretch. And then you take your pelvis and you roll your pelvis forward. You find that there? Uh -huh. And if you don't, that's okay. I do. It's okay. just subtle. All right, cool. Let's go ahead. Which is what you probably wanted. Yeah, so now we're going to go ahead and switch sides. And Ryan, why can't I do this standing, right? We want that muscle to be completely relaxed when we do this foam roll work or hand work or stick work or whatever you do. So by me sitting and just kind of relaxing, I can get into that muscle a little bit easier. All right, hey, Stephen. Hopefully you can join along. So uh, Stephen, who just popped in, he's the uh, Concordia Crusher. That's what people know him about, you know? <laughs> Yeah, right, Steven? No? Well, Concordia might be closed, right? Concordia now. is closed. Yeah. 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 All right, so again, I'm just massaging that muscle. Uh, whole concept here is trying to avoid equipment because I want everyone to kind of feel like they can be involved and do some of this stuff without necessarily needing to run out and get a bunch of stuff. All right, so now I'm going to come back into my stretch and let's do an alternative uh, calf stretch. So here, I'm just gonna drive my heel into the floor, right? And I'm gonna let my other leg just bend ever so slightly. Yeah, see like this one, I feel it a lot. Okay, so like a lot over that seven? Uh, no, but it, the stretch itself, yeah. I just feel yeah. so easy. So what's interesting with me, I don't really don't feel much of a difference. Really? I yeah. wonder what that is. Yeah, so uh, I you just know, have more leverage about. over. Yeah, I mean, that could, and that could be, you know. So again, other important things here is that you don't feel the stretch move up into the back of your knee. Yeah. 
Right, you don't feel it down by your ankle. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So now, let's see what we can do here. So we got, now to get that uh, flexibility set, we gotta do some calf raises, right? So um, I could do probably calf raises all day long on both feet. So I'm gonna grab a hold of the chair here and I'm gonna go single leg calf raises, okay? So the concept behind getting the flexibility to stick is you bypass that muscle safety, otherwise known as the muscle spindle, through some massage, foam rolling, stick work, or whatever. Then you light, easy stretch, and then you train it, right? And what I mean by that is you could even do like some squats, for instance, because for you to be able to get in a squat position, you have to have that calf flexibility. Because see the, the joint angle here? The more I have, more of this angle at my, the greater, sorry, the sharper the angle at the ankle, ankle. sharper the angle at the ankle is going to require more flexibility in the calf. So if you guys are having a hard time doing your uh, squats and you see your feet kind of turn out as you squat, that's really a result of uh, poor flexibility in the calves and that could be limiting the potential of you getting into your squat. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So again, it's good. basically I call it stick, stretch, train, right? Or uh, we're gonna call it massage, stretch it, train it. All right, so now let's go ahead and work our way into the quads. And this is a good one, right? So the quads, everyone calls them the quads, right? There's four quad muscles, right? And if you look at your, like you ever seen someone with, you know, really muscular legs, you can see how they just kind of like wrap around uh, the thigh, right? There's four of them. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm using the butt of my palm here. I'm just going to massage this one side, right? And I'm not crushing it. Everything should feel good. So remember the goal here is like basically like this is sports massage. Actually, yeah, this is sports massage. So I'm not looking for that trigger point and just crushing that muscle. That's something different. There's like trigger point and then there's sports massage. Sports massage, you should be thinking about like being able to relax into it, breathe into it, just get the lactic acid out of there. Just help with, uh, you know, again, bypassing that muscle spindle. So when we combine it with the training, you're, you're not like, you're not just short circuiting your like nervous system because it hurts so much. Right. People get confused like with the foam rolling that, oh my God, it's supposed to hurt. Oh my God, it hurts so good. Right. Like really what's the goal? Right? Is it the trigger point that you're looking for, or are we looking to like loosen up, feel good, you know? So why would you want to loosen up versus trigger point? I guess okay, so, I'm missing that little piece. Um, good question, right? So when you'd have a knot in your muscle, right? Uh, it's basically, think of your muscle, like all your muscles, like when I flex my bicep, right? Yeah. When I extend my arm, right? So when I get, uh, a knot, look what happens to my train tracks, right? Those train tracks kind of almost become, infl sorry, in become inflamed, right? So this is my bicep, I'm flexing, right? You can see what my muscle's doing when I extend my arm, right? So if I have a knot in my muscle, all of a sudden, those, that functionality of that is not working as well, right? And then also if it can become inflamed and uh, bigger, right? So what trigger point therapy does is basically you hit that knot and you iron it out uh -huh. okay? okay and the reason why um, muscle knots can cause a problem because when it becomes bigger it pushes on the fascia so fascia is like the saran wrap that wraps around your muscles uh -huh. right and when that fascia gets pushed on that's when you typically start to feel things at the joint right uh -huh. so let's say we're talking about thighs you're talking about how your knees were bothering the other yeah. day so when your muscles become engulfed or you have like a trigger point or which I do right now okay yeah. so um, and and it could even be like a, like a byproduct of exercise how you know when you put your pants on after a workout they're like your jeans are tight yeah. so if the muscle gets bigger they become inflamed it pushes on that fascia mm -hmm. and that fascia is just gonna pull right on that joint and that's where that joint pain is gonna be so the idea is to keep muscles loose like athletic muscle is like floppy muscle Right? I mean, you should be able yeah. to do something like this yeah. and keep it like just really loose because it's gonna avoid those aches, pains, what I call uh, the check engine light going off. Uh -huh. Okay, so, okay. and then, but that doesn't necessarily mean like trigger point therapy is always the answer. Right, you know, I got because, to, yeah. Um, you could actually make, maybe make it inflame a little more. 
there you go. Yeah, you that know? makes sense. Um, so again, what I'm doing here, so just so we all know, like a, to repeat this process, I'm using my stick or I'm massaging, right? Yeah. Getting like on the inside of my uh, thigh, on the top part of my thigh, I'm just massaging nice and easy, right? I'm gonna stretch it. And I got a really good strength exercise we're gonna combine this. Okay, so just so you guys uh, following along here, um, I'm using my hand just to grab a hold of my ankle. I am not pulling my heel back to my rear end. I'm just bringing that knee behind me. Um, so yeah, the difference between, um, I also find that if you're, part of a balanced training program is recovery, right? So if you're working really hard, right? like foam rolling and hitting those trigger points, your nervous system doesn't get its break, yeah. right? So, and think about how much your nervous system is taxed through like with intensity, right? Think about like just your day-to-day -day with daily stressors and your, uh, how many times is it you taxing your nervous system? Even with like drinking coffee, mm -hmm. you know, like all these things are having an effect on your nervous right. system. You know, so you gotta be able to, uh, all right, so now we're gonna train it. So, and how we're gonna do this is we're gonna do a split-legged squat or a, a, like a lunge. So see what I'm doing here is I'm rolling my pelvis forward, my back heel is up. Just being in this, see how my back heel is nice and high? Good, I'm not leading with my belly, right? I'm in my power position. And I'm gonna drive pushing with my front heel. And as I keep my torso upright, it's exaggerating that stretch on the front side of my thigh. Right, so before we've always had like power position rear end out looking for that uh, work on the back side of yeah. the front leg by being more upright with rolling that pelvis forward and getting more of that front side quad stretch. Good, it shouldn't, shouldn't be too much work, shake it out, you know, like. That's a well, lot of work for so me. So that's, we're training, that's right. the training aspect right. of it, right? So we don't wanna crush it, we just right. wanna get that body to remember. Just hit it a little bit. Yeah, so let's right. actually run through the other side and I'll be kind of like the, the review of this one muscle here. So. Um, when you stick or when you, uh, when you massage that muscle with a foam roller or one of those handheld sticks, don't crush it, just feel good doing it. What's up, Jason? Uh, I'm using the butt of my palm, I'm just massaging nice and easy, getting some of that blood flow, I'm bypassing that muscle safety, right? Notice how I'm getting like on the, you know, again, your quads wrap around, right? So I'm just getting the whole thing here and I'm not crushing, I'm just feeling good. If pressure wise, I'm like a, maybe a five. Right, and that's good, yeah, you can really just like dig in there with both hands, yeah. right, just feeling good. And I like to call this like sports massage. Trigger therapy is, <laughs> right, so we're not doing that today, right? So just massage, right, then we're gonna stretch it. So again, I'm grabbing hold of my ankle. I'm not pulling my heel back to the rear, I'm just bringing that knee behind me. Right, no tension in the joint, just should feel good. And I remember by that, by us massaging the muscle first, we're bypassing that safety, right? Another way we've been bypassing the safety is going from one side to the other, one side to the other. You've heard me talk about like just going back and forth, back and forth. That's a way for your body to welcome the stretch without doing this. This we're getting right to the point, right? So I'm gonna shake it out, right? Hit that one more time and then we're gonna train it. And that's how the body remembers to stretch, is through resistance, right? You're, you've massaged the muscle, you've bypassed the safety, we're stretching it to get that range of motion that we're looking for, and then we're gonna train it in that range of motion that we're looking for, and that is how the body will remember. All right, back up. Cool. Ask me some questions, cool. put me to the test. So, again here, I'm back heel is way high. Right, I'm rolling my pelvis forward. I can already feel that stretch come through the front side of my back leg, and right, and we're still always, you know, maintaining that good posture. Right, yeah, we're just you know getting a little bit of work, and the lower I go, the uh, I can feel it just a little bit more in the front side of my thigh. And this is this is an important one. Like I always talk about, like that tightness in the quads through your daily activity or being seated all day and. These guys can cause a lot of problems, right? So that's a really good way to kind of address that. And if you're having back problems, that's something to look at, okay? All right, so uh, moving on. So hamstrings, I'm not too concerned about because 
every muscle is designed a certain way, right? And they all have a different function. For instance, like I mentioned before, how the calf muscles are woven almost like this, right? And they're designed for, and what I mean by woven, like the actual muscle fibers, right? So my bicep is uh, made for uh, strength and like range of motion, right? My calf muscles are like this because they're meant for endurance and lasting all day. So that's why those bodybuilders have such a hard time building like big calf muscles because they're not designed for that. They're meant for the long haul, right? Mm -hmm. Biceps are easier to build that strength. Um, so in regards to the hamstring, the hamstrings are designed to get stronger by that stretch. So all that stiff legged deadlift work that we've been doing is helping with the strength and the flexibility. So I'm not gonna necessarily cover that right now. Okay. okay? Uh, moving on, let's go ahead and get into some glute work, right? So um, this is uh, where we're gonna, again, lie on our side here. We're gonna take our thumb, and I want you guys just to, or maybe in the fingers, and how we find this spot is I take my hands, I put them right on my hips, right? See where your thumb is? That's the spot that we're looking to massage, okay? And there is literally a button, like, right here, right where my thumb is, that's, that's gonna be that part that can cause a lot of problems. So this one here, you might find it's gonna go right into that trigger point feeling, but let's just see if we can avoid like the pain and just kind of like, again, get the body accustomed to, you know, just loosening up to it. If you jump right into like that intensity and that hurt, all of a sudden, Again, we're taxing that nervous system. There's tension in the body, and it's gonna be hard for us to really get that movement that we're looking for, right? All right, so uh, yeah, I'm just massaging here. See if we can find a good way just to relax. You know, and this is where maybe like a tennis ball or something like that, something soft, right, would help you out. Just kind of lying on the floor trying to find that spot. All right, yeah. And it's like a glute muscle? Or? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yep. If it's not in your hip, though. I guess uh, so. Kind of right above. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Cool. Is it, it pretty like pretty much the size of your fingertip or? Is yeah, it I would say it's probably like like maybe like that big. You okay. Know? Um, the muscles probably like maybe that big altogether. Okay. So sorry, muscles probably like this big altogether. You know, so it's about right. Yeah. All right. So now. Rather than going to the other side, let's go ahead and see if we can find a stretch for that. So one of my favorite ways to do this stretch, and we'll see if we can find it here, is whatever side that we're just working on, we're gonna take our uh, left foot, we're gonna cross it over our right knee, and we're gonna shimmy that right foot across our body. So it's just like naturally by me shimming my foot, it's pulling my leg across my body, right? I'm just gonna relax my torso, and again, I'm gonna try to pull that foot across my body, almost like I'm sliding the shoe off. And I can feel that kind of come through my rear here. Notice how my hips aren't coming up off the ground, right? I'm just settling into it, right? I can use that foot to assist me to pull that over, right? So let's say you're having a hard time getting it. It's totally fine because everybody is in like Sarah's body, my body, your body for the people who are joining us is different. And there's different stressors that we're putting on our body that's gonna cause tightness in different areas. So. If you don't get it, just try. You know, it's all part of like the learning process, right? So I'm gonna shake it out, I'm gonna do that one more time. You know, and again, I do like to release my stretches and come back into them just because um, I wanna see if, I'm gonna make sure that I bypass that safety, right? And again, by going in and out of that same stretch over and over again, right. it's another way of just, you know, releasing that muscle. Yeah, I definitely especially with the flexibility portion of what you're trying to do. I mean, but my body's like, no, I don't want to go anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I stop and then over time, this will just get a little better and better. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so now that we just train, or sorry, stretch it, now we got to train it, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is the tough one. This is like a, so ideally what we want to do is have something around our knees where we get a little bit of tension from the outside, right? So let's see what we can do with, uh, you know, we'll just do a regular little bridge like we have been, right? So now I can feel this already directly right in my rear just from doing my bridges. How about you? Um, no, but I can, I can see that it wants to go there, yeah. but I'm still weak, I think, a little bit. Like in 
your hamstring, yeah, where your hamstring connects to your glutes. Kind of like right here, yeah. under, yeah. So. Um, so again, as I'm doing this, right, I'm using my hands just to assist in going a little bit higher. Right, I'm contracting my rear at the top. Right, and again, we're not crushing it, we're just, again, feeling where that work is. All right, let's go ahead and go to the other side. All right. Um, so the goal behind the stick work, palm work, whatever you want to call it, uh, sports massage, is to be able to relax the muscle as much as possible, right? And then that allows you to get into it. Okay. Yeah. You can just feel good doing it, right? And maybe I could even take, make a fist, right? And just kind of like roll my bottom onto that fist here. See if I can find it a little bit. There we go, that works pretty good. All right, so again, the goal of today's work is to get the body to remember the flexibility that we work on. Because it's a known fact, you stop stretching, you lose your flexibility, right? And for those of us who just being flexible isn't like the only goal, how can we get the body to remember that? And flexibility, is, and I'm going right into my next stretch, the one we just did where I cross my right foot over that left knee and I shimmy that left foot across my body and I pull across here. Um, so why is flexibility important in someone's like training program, right? If your body is forced into a position it's not used to being in, you're gonna sprain, strain, fall, uh, tear muscles. Uh, yeah, I mean, so it's like when your body is forced into a position it's not used to being in, that's where the injury happens. Right, so let's say if you fall skiing and all of a sudden your body's pushed into a position that's not used to being in, that's where there's trouble, right? Or uh, let's say if you slip off a curb and you roll your ankle, right? Like if your body's not used to being at that range of motion, that limit, you're gonna sprain, strain, potentially even fall and break, break your ankle or break something else by your fall. So by learning these limits, getting your body, helping your body to understand these limits and moving into my bridge, um, you're just gonna really limit your potential for injury, which is, that's great, that's what everyone wants, you know? And combining it with like balance, so you don't fall just unknowingly, like not maybe extreme sports aren't your thing, but you know, maybe going for a walk in the woods is your thing. You know, you want to be able to catch yourself so you don't get in that position. And God forbid that you do find yourself in that position. You know, you're able to uh, avoid a serious injury. Well, I I wasn't able to do those before, and now I can. Do what those. do you mean? One leg. Oh, look at different. you! Right. Yeah, right. So, all right, good. I'm glad you even brought that up. So, another thing about uh, this, I want to call it palmistry. You can call it palmistry, right? I know it's wrong, but you know, using your palm is that uh, you can get these muscles turned on and working, mm -hmm. right? So by massaging it, mm -hmm. it maybe it's just helping, a helping it yeah. just like be involved, right? right? So uh, through injury or years and years of not using these particular muscles, mm -hmm. they just shut off, right. right? And then all of a sudden, this intricate part of your core is not working as it should, right. you know? And then you're just, uh, and that's where those more energy leaks can come into play. Yeah. All right, so um, let's see, where are we at here? Um, let's go ahead and move in. So upper body is tough, right? So it's a tough one to really like get into, but there's one that's important is uh, we'll do the armpits, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm just, again, I'm just gonna sit, you know, just relaxing, relaxing and I'm gonna try to get into my armpit. And I want my uh, muscle to be like jelly. Right. Right, that is the goal, right? Now, when I took that yoga uh, restorative, class, the restorative, yeah. yeah, that was insanely amazing for my upper back. Yeah. In those little balls, and you yeah. kind of just focus in one area, and you just yeah. spend time there. I don't necessarily think you need a full hour of it, but, well, I guess it depends on how much you want to take on, but if we were to just sort of do this with those little balls, just even a few minutes a day, huge yeah. impacts. Like, for yeah. someone who has a lot of extra, you know, I don't know, muscular pain and 
Well, again, it's I all like how you carry yourself, stress, right? Yeah. And you know, for you and your upper back issues and yeah. your shoulder issues, you're probably like using these muscles that are like just too much. And yeah. again, that nervous system's like way right. out of whack, and it's just like right. the muscles just aren't engaged as they should. There isn't that balance in the body in that area, and that's where that pain's coming from. So, um, all right, so I'm massaging here, nice and easy. Hey yo, what's up, armpit? You, right? And now I'm gonna just. You know, sit nice and easy, and I'm just going to try to reach to one side and lengthen and reach, right? So, and just as an experiment here, right? So we're going to switch sides and see if we feel a difference. Yeah, I definitely feel tighter. Oh, yeah. yeah. So For we're just, sure. again, um, bypassing okay. that muscle spindle, right? That's what that massage does. It just allows, like, for an easier stretch. And it's just kind of a nice experiment yeah. so you can see, there's a big you know, there's difference. a big difference, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm gonna move into the other side. What's going on, Saul? How you doing, man? Yeah, so basically, I would like to think, you know, Saul mentioned the armpit, we're, we're massaging under the armpit, not the actual <laughs> armpit, you know? But that's a really good observation, Saul. Nice job, thank you for participating, you know? <laughs> you know, it's funny, just by doing this, I can feel my chest binding up a bit and again so when I feel this like you can see how I'm taking my shoulders and I'm pulling across my body and I'm trying to uh, massage that armpit I'm getting an impingement in my chest and that's the muscle not relaxing and just kind of bunching up yeah. on each other so we can maybe see what we can do with that right huh. so let's go ahead and uh, oh, thanks buddy I got my uh, one of my favorite shirts on today I wore it for you guys right can you guys make it out Queens of the Stone Age. Yes. Nice. Yep. I like the wolves. That's my dog. That's my, uh, our late yes. Charlie girl. You know? All right, so now let's get into the chest. All right, so I'm just going to massage here just nice and easy, you know? And again, training these muscles in the upper body is going to be tough mm -hmm. because we don't have that equipment. But if you wanted to train uh, the armpit after we just did the uh, massage, stretch, and um, the strength aspect would be like a pull up or a pull down, oh, okay. you know, or maybe even some band work this way. Um, a row this way doesn't use those muscles as much. It's more of like the middle of the back, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. All right, and we can do both here because it's going to be easy to get both of these at the same time. So, yeah, see, Saul likes this shirt. What's up? Saul knows. You're in Texas, right, Saul? You still you in Texas? Eating barbecue for breakfast? All right, so now we're gonna take our hands, we're gonna put our fingers pointed directly at the wall behind us, we're gonna puff up that chest, and this is where you can get a really good glimpse. Uh, yeah, he's in Texas still. Barbecue for breakfast, San Antonio. Tacos, tacos for breakfast. Is that kind of like the breakfast burrito? Is that what you do the breakfast tacos? Is that what they do in San Antonio? So what are we supposed to be feeling? This is in the shoulder? Yep, the shoulder. So, so the chest kind of just spindles in through the joint and it connects to uh, the top of the bone here, right? So that's what is responsible for this, okay. right? So when we were pulling our arm across, you can see how that muscle could get kind of bunched up there. Yeah. So here, and this is a tough one. Faze, my man, what's going on? Hey, so Faze, I'm doing these flexibility, mobility, strength, and core work uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at two o'clock mountain time. So I'm glad you're popping in, you know? So I'm here I'm getting a nice, easy chest stretch, right? So coming through my shoulders. All right, very good. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, move on from here because we could spend more time on the rest of the body, but, uh, it gets a little bit complicated without equipment, so we're gonna keep things simple. But again, if you want to maintain that flexibility, right, or you wanna work on that flexibility, you gotta massage it, you gotta stretch it, and then you gotta train it in that range of motion. So think about those things uh, if you wanna maintain flexibility, all right? I took you through some of the easy ones. Um, all right, so let's get into some stomach work, and then uh, we'll move on from there. All right, so secret with the stomach, right? Um, you want to work the upper part of your abdominals, you move the upper body. 
right? You want to work the lower part of the abdominals, you move the lower body, right? You want to work the sides, right? So, right, you guys get that? There you go. <laughs> so, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, right, let's go ahead and run through uh, exercise for each of those areas, right? So, we're going to do four abdominal exercises back to back, and let's, uh, let's take it from there, right? So, the first one, let's go ahead and do just an upper body crunch, all right? So, um, thing with the upper body crunch, if I had my shirt off, you'd see my eight pack, right? So this top part of the pack right here is responsible for this crunch. That next pack is responsible for this crunch. And see how I'm curling into a ball? So if you find yourself sitting up without curling into that ball, you're not potentially working your abs like you'd want to, right? So the idea is, again, curl into that ball, okay? And um, here's how it's gonna look. So where we position our hands, is gonna add resistance, right? So I'm gonna start here, and if my neck bothers me, I'm gonna keep one hand right here and the other hand behind my back. All right, so feet flat on the floor. I'm just gonna go ahead and crunch up and I'm gonna exaggerate that pause, okay? And then I'm gonna drop just until I feel that tension come off and I'm gonna come back up. So it's funny because as a career trainer and all my trainer buddies uh, that I'm friends with on Facebook probably get this, once someone finds out that you're a trainer, they just wanna tell you, how much they do and how many they do, you know, and how strong they are. <laughs> and that's cool. I love hearing of those stories, especially when, you know, people are getting into it and they've, you know, they've caught the gift of fitness, right? So your goal is not to be able to do 100 push-ups or 100 sit-ups or 100 anything. Really, if you're doing more than 20 of something, you really should try to make it more difficult, right? Because remember, the goal with strength work is anaerobic without the use of oxygen you want to get that burn and be done if you're doing a hundred or something right and it's like five minutes go by and you're not getting that like that work that you set out to do so you're not getting the benefit of it right so again think about what your goals are you want core strength right you got to train like your core you want abs to look good and come when beach weather comes in don't want to be doing a hundred anything because you're going to become the shape of a coke can you know, Coke cans don't look good, you know? All right, so that was the upper part, right? So crunching upper body, upper part of the abs. Let's go ahead and now do something with the lower. So uh, making sure that we're maintaining that core strength, I'm gonna keep that space between the small, the back, and the floor. And I'm gonna extend my legs out, see if you guys can see here, right? I'm just gonna flutter my feet, right? The lower my feet are, Right? The harder this exercise is, and my back is going to arch up, and that space is going to develop. So your goal, if you're following along here, again, is to maintain that space. So this is my neutral position on the floor. I'm taking a mental snapshot of what my small of my back is and what it feels like. And when I extend my legs and I do this exercise, I want to maintain that space. The lower to the ground, the harder it's going to be to maintain that space. Right, so find that spot, and the faster you do this, the more difficult it's gonna be. I could literally put my feet up into the ceiling and keep my legs straight and maintain that space. This is easy, it's still doing some work, right? Right. You know, and I could just go lower as like, oh, right there I start to lose it, so I'm gonna come back up, right? So, nice job, yeah, cool. Good. All right, so, um, whew, get that cramping, so oh, I might no. have to stop. So, I used to have, a. Uh, Back in the day, I guess I'm still in the day, but uh, whenever I would train my stomach, I literally would feel my abs like rip. Like if I do more ab work right now, I literally will feel like my oh, abs man. just like tear, right? And I found out it's a lack of magnesium. So I've, uh, I've been training a lot more lately, so I, uh, I need to get back on that. So Sarah's gonna be my, uh, my model for these next exercises. Woo, man. Oh, no. All right, so. Um, my, uh, my better half here, everyone. Hi. Oof, man. All right. <laughs> Back in the day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we've done the upper part. We've done the lower part. And now we're going to do, uh, obliques. Okay. okay. That's middle. Uh, so obliques are oh, the sides. The sides. And there's okay. actually two. There's the external, internal, but let's not worry about that right now. So let's go ahead and I'm going to have you sit up and sink your ribs. So what I mean by that is literally sink your ribs and curl into that ball. You're gonna keep your feet, like, uh, you can even keep them on the ground, that's fine. But now at this point, lower yourself back 
and keep, there you go, perfect, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine you're holding on to a 100-pound medicine ball, uh -huh. right? You're gonna rotate to the side, you're gonna touch it to the floor, okay. good, and you're gonna go to the other side. Notice as she starts to fatigue, right, she's gonna start sitting a little bit more up, right? So the goal here is literally fall back a little bit further for me, sink those ribs, right? And, um, you're, you're, so now, if you're in the wrong spot, right, you're gonna start to feel your hips kind of bind up and yeah. fatigue first. And if you can't keep it in your stomach and you can't keep that intensity there, you're done. Yeah, right? I can definitely feel it in my stomach. Okay, good. That's where it is, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, That's very, good for me. <laughs> okay, so now let's move into a side plank. All right. Okay, so. Um, here's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we're, um, as long as you guys can see all right here, uh, bottom leg's gonna bend at 90 degrees. Good, and you're gonna balance the resistance between the leg that's straight mm -hmm. and the outside of this knee, right? So the cool thing about this, and as you're holding this position, think about that neutral spine again, right? So perfect, good. So shoulders down, chest high, right? There's a strain on your hips keeping that up, there's a string on your obliques keeping that up, good. Okay, so as you push with this foot here, mm -hmm. right, you can feel your groin engage. Yeah. As you push with that outside knee, mm -hmm. you're gonna feel the outside of your hip engage. Yeah. Right, and you're thinking of that string right here that's, you know, helping you hold in position, and that's where your core comes into play. Gotcha. Okay, mm -hmm. how's that feel doing that? Good, Like yeah. all day long? Good. No, definitely not. Okay, cool. I feel it like really tight down in my lower back. Okay, so I don't know if that's necessarily good. Right. You know, so, because remember, it's, a, it's a, basically a side exercise here. Right. You should feel the lower part. So let's try coming back to it. So okay. go ahead and flip around. We'll do the other okay. side. Faze, how's everything going, man? Hopefully you're still there. All right, so remember, this leg's bent at 90 degrees. Good. And you're applying that pressure on the inside of the foot, the outside of the hip, right? Mm -hmm. And do you feel that in your back at all there? No. Okay. Do you feel it like right here? Uh, a little. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and take this hand and put it up in the ceiling here. And I just like, just it helps me keep the idea of everything stacked on top of each other. Right. And go ahead now, just let your hips fall toward the floor and then back up. And think about that string pulling you up. Yeah, this side's way better. I think my, shoulder, my right shoulder is bothering me. Okay. So it's kind of doing Yeah. And all right, so one side stronger than the other, right? So let's stop there. Let's okay. go to the other side and see what we can do to fix it. And if we can't, we don't want to like again exaggerate like a problem and imbalance. So yeah. when you do one side of something, you got to make sure that you're matching repetitions within range. Okay. okay. So here, uh, before you start, go ahead and pop yourself up. Yeah. Ground everything. Puff that as in no, you're you're good right where you okay. were. But puff that chest up. Good. Okay. Right, retracting those shoulders, driving those shoulders down. Think about that string on your head just making you longer. Mm -hmm. And mash that fist into the ground. That's gonna hopefully take some of the pressure away from that shoulder. Mm -hmm. Bottom leg bent at 90 degrees. Good, okay, so now go ahead and bring yourself up. Put that arm up to the ceiling. Good, and just check in with yourself here, right? Mm -hmm. So you're running through that checklist just to make sure that everything feels appropriate, right? So you're mashing that fist in there, you're looking forward. Uh, pressure on the outside of the knee, pressure on the inside of the foot, right? How's that feel? It's good. When you focus on all those things, there's definitely more like spread, good. not so much pain okay. so, in my shoulder. So much pain. You're still experiencing that pain. A little bit, okay. but not on a scale of nearly one to ten. as bad, like a two. Okay. Do you feel your abs work at all? Yes. Okay, cool. Let's try without dropping those shoulders, Okay. right? Just drop your hips just ever so slightly and back up. Okay, that goes into my shoulder. Okay, cool, so yeah. done. Yeah. All right, so here's okay. what we're gonna do for those of you uh, watching along at home. You're gonna start with that side, mm -hmm. and the goal of this exercise for you is literally to run through that checklist and feel good doing it. Okay. So you're not gonna progress to the next movement until there's until balance, awesome. yeah. right? Because you just like supporting yourself in that mm -hmm. position is work, right. right? And it's all the, again, all those smaller supporting muscles need to be involved, right? So you can support yourself. Right, so if we all of a sudden jump to the hip dip, then we're missing the hip that, dip. The hip dip. We're, um, we're missing that right. that level of support. Exactly. Okay? Yeah, I totally get it. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So that is those are our four ab exercises. So let's run through that again, and uh, I'm going to run through this again with you guys because uh, 
I had a request for a bunch of ab exercises. I want to make sure that I'm, uh, I'm listening. I want everyone to know that I'm listening. Yes, and delivering. Delivering okay. the goods. All right, so Sarah's still going to be the model because I'm, okay. I'm at my limit when it comes to crunches. Okay. So I got to get some magnesium. I got to get back on that. Heck yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so the first one was upper. The crunch, yep. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. here, let me go ahead and shift you guys over. You can see what she's doing. All right, so where she positions her hands is going to... Um, dictate the intensity, right? So if you have one hand above your head, think about like how much of the weight of your arm is now involved in that crunch. So again, hand positioning is, is all good. Yeah, and I'm not super Okay, strong, good, so. and the fingertips behind the head are perfect because mm -hmm. you're helping support your neck, right? Mm -hmm. And you're also gonna keep your elbows open, right? So that's what I mean by open, mm -hmm. right? As you fatigue, you're gonna wanna bring your elbows in, so keep them there, all right? Okay. And curl under that ball, exaggerate that pause, and your breathing, of course, that's important. Right? And go ahead and drop until you feel my finger and then you're back up, right? And I like that big pause at the top. So my goal with all these uh, like stomach exercises is get the work done, finish quickly, right? Really make that mind muscle connection of what you're working, what you're doing, right? Running through that checklist of you're keeping those arms open toward the ceiling, you're curling into that ball, you're breathing, right? And Sarah's going to make me look good here because she's going to fatigue quickly and be done. Yeah. That's the idea, right? I don't want you guys like just trying to do as many as you can. So remember, yeah. old school crunch here. Ways yeah. that you can change, great exercise. Ways that you can change it up is go slower. Mm -hmm. Exaggerate that pause. Maybe only have this much of a range of motion rather than like all the way back down to the ground. So think about that sort of stuff, okay? So let's go ahead and um, roll over on our stomach and do a cobra. You know what the cobra is? Ooh, no. All right, so before you do this here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all the way down, please. Like, Yep. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and you can dig your hands in like in a push up, right? Okay. So before you press yourself up, mm -hmm. drive those shoulders down, clench that rear and roll that pelvis forward, right? And then you can, so I'm looking just for the stomach stretch. Your goal is not to completely come all the way up and chances are you're feeling this come through your stomach, maybe front side of your hips and a little bit in your thighs, right? No lower back impingement, no shoulder pain. And if you are experiencing that, don't come so high. Okay. okay. So go ahead and drop yourself all the way back down, please. Okay. So again, the goal isn't full extension, right? The goal is just to feel that stretch where you want to feel it. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kevin, what's going on, man? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> all right. So shoulders down. Good. Right, rolling that pelvis forward, drawing that belly button in and breathing nice and easy. Very good, we'll take it on your back. Okay. And now we're gonna move into the, uh, the flutter kicks here. Okay. And uh, let's see if you guys can see here. All right, Sarah, my, uh, my uh, model, you know, my better half. All right, so things are important, right? The setup is that you're maintaining that space between the small of the back and the floor. I like to take a snapshot with my feet on the ground, mm -hmm. right? Good. Yeah. And then you can start fluttering your feet. Okay. As soon as you start to develop that big space between the small of the back and the floor, and you start to, you'll feel your stomach kind of balloon, right? That's when we need to like adjust the exercise. Cause again, yeah, by you just kind of going to your limit and just that big arch happening, you're going for longer. Now we've lost the core support for this exercise, which allows you to like do the work that you want to do. Right? So it's all about like kind of like walking before you jog, jogging before you, you know, run, running before you sprint. All right. Uh, Kevin, we're doing all right. You know, um, we're filming at our lodge in Whitefish, Montana, and uh, I think we're going to be closed for another month without any guests. So um, kind of a bummer, but, you know, we're making the best of it, you know. Getting fit. Yeah, we're trying to get fit, right? <laughs> it's just the... The wine, the beer, and the cookies seem to be going down pretty easy these days, so. And the margaritas. Yep, Sarah's on the margaritas now. <laughs> I haven't really crossed that, crossed that threshold yet. Yeah, don't do it. Uh, and now we have the, uh, the ball exercise from side to side. Oh, right. Yep. Right, right, right. All right, so I like to feet on the ground, right? Yeah. Sink those ribs, fall back, 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 good. There we go, <laughs> hold on to that ball. Okay. Yep, and then go from side to side. Totally okay that you have your feet up um, off the ground. Yeah, totally fine. Sink those ribs, right? Less is more when it comes to the stomach exercises, right? And remember, with the stomach exercises or any exercise, 
know where you're supposed to feel it. And if you're doing that exercise and you're feeling it somewhere else, like your, your hip, your back, your neck, that's feedback, right? That's not the stomach, right? So she's starting to kind of like, yeah, you know, sit so upright. Good. Yeah, no, you did great. That's, yeah, that's okay. the goal. You're, and okay. this is the toughest part as like, as a right. fitness trainer, instructor, coach, everyone thinks like you want to beat the fitness instructor, trainer, coach, right? It's not about that. It's about you learning how to do these exercises, feel it in the right spot, really make that connection because as we age and as we're doing, it's not about just getting crushed all the time. Right. It's about keeping your foot in the door. What's up, Jeff? Long time. Um, all right, so uh, now we have our side plank. Okay, okay so we're gonna start with the weaker side weaker first, side. please. Yeah. All right, and before we even get up into position, um, we're gonna lock and load everything, right? So posture, right? Shoulders down, right? <laughs> So you're balancing that resistance between the outside of the knee and the, uh, sorry if you guys can see that, the inside of the foot, right? And there's a string right here, right? And there you go, and put that arm up in the ceiling and pick that head up just slightly for me so you can see here. And you should literally look like, you know, there you go, how's that feel holding that position? So. Uh really good okay yeah. so the concept here was that uh sarah's got kind of like a bum shoulder from pitching and you know uh swimming and you know biking. life biking all that stuff so what we're trying to do is just develop that integrity in the shoulder again so just by holding this position yeah she could bang out more advanced side plank and do the hip dip but she can't do it on this side so we're making sure that we're just keeping balance in the body that's the idea mm -hmm and you're breathing, of course, and you can even see yourself in the uh, FaceTime Live reflection here. Mm -hmm. So look good doing it, right? So if you mm -hmm. start to see your form start to go. Yeah, right? you know it's like, yeah. okay. okay, cool. And we're doing the other side because we've got to make sure that we're, uh, you know, we're not walking out of here like, you know, needing a V8. You guys remember those commercials, the V8 commercials? Where you yeah. like walk to the, you're, everyone's like, you know, yeah. look completely locked. Mm -hmm. so. And so we're going to fix that leg there. So bend that bottom leg for me just a bit. There you go. Good. And pressure on the outside of the knee, inside of the foot. Everything looks good. So <sighs> no, if my right arm isn't as strong and I can't really do the dip, should I be on my left or no? Because it's about evening. Uh, evening your left out. being this side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, we're going to just match duration of time. Okay. You know, so let's say we, like I wasn't paying attention, but let's just say 30 seconds, maybe even 20, 25, you know? Okay. Um, and as you're doing these exercises, right, and you're feeling these exercises, and I'm all about running through that checklist, which is really difficult, but that's really like the art of like training is, again, sure. understanding how to do it and how to feel it and making sure that you're feeling in the right spots. Um, you're gonna feel that you're moving into different muscles as you pass that threshold of work, right? So at first, you know, you might feel it in the right spot, but as you hold it for that duration of time, yeah, you still look good in your reflection, but all of a sudden other things are starting to show themselves, right? So fatigue, fatigued muscles and weak links in the body are gonna show themselves through exercise, right? They're gonna, they're gonna pop their head out first. What's up, Mike? You, yeah. nice to see you, buddy. Um, so you when I'm getting, well, I can see him, <laughs> he's there, you know? Yeah. Um, so the idea is like when you're tired, you're fatigued, right? And you're doing an exercise, the weak link is going to show itself, right? So that doesn't mean push past it because you're going to be exaggerating that weak link. Like stay, like if you can't do it and you're not feeling it where you're supposed to, back away, right? Come back to it again. And as you come back to it, and as you come back to it with consistency, that's how you're going to get stronger, all right? Um, how are we doing on time? Uh, let's see. We are at 2.50. Holy smokes, time's going by. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, that's our two rounds of stomach. Let's go ahead and um, get into some mobility work, and we'll just you know spend some time on the hips and the stretching and all that stuff. So, Mike, what's going down? Santa Rosa, <laughs> you know? Is it Mike Warren? It's Mike Warren. What's yeah. up? Sarah says hello. All right, so let's go ahead and... Uh, start with my favorite hip stretch here, and this is going to be really good for you, Mike. All right, so I'm just going to drop my hips to one side, like so, right, and just practice being upright, you know. And I'm even going to like maybe use my hand here. So if my right knee is down, I'm just going to assist in pushing down and exaggerating that posture, right? Relaxing, pushing down. 
And for those of you who are just joining here, you can mess around with this, right? But if you're just starting off, just limit it to just, you know, you guys moving from side to side, All right? I'm switching here, right? Posture, right? Big belly breaths. I definitely have way more mobility in my hips now though. Like this one used to be really hard for me. Yeah. And, and it's so easy. I, that's great, yeah. right? So, and notice when I switch sides, I gotta be able to have that right. movement in my hips, right? To, yeah. And everything needs to be, every like joint, as in your ankle, your knee, your hips, all your vertebrae and your back, those are all joints, right? So if, if things aren't working as they should, like your hips, your lower back has to make up for that, yeah. right? So now all of a sudden we're getting that movement in our hips, it's moving as we're supposed to, it's gonna let up on that back, mm -hmm. right? The back's not gonna have to make up for that. Yeah, um, this, these are super easy. Yeah. I remember when we first started this, this was so awkward for yeah. me, so crazy. All right, so now let's go ahead and um, fall on our back here. Okay, let's see if I can position my heels so up you guys see me. So I'm gonna take my hands, put them on my hips, and I'm just gonna let my legs fall over to one side. All right, so I'm using my core, right, to draw my belly button and let my hips fall, right? My, I can feel my left rear end just ever so slightly starting to come up off the floor, but that's where I engage my core, right, to keep my hips planted. And I'm just letting the weight of my legs pull me over. All right, so I'm gonna transition sides. I'm gonna lock and load my belly first, belly button drawn in, and then drop on the other side, right? So what I don't want to see, and you might be able to see it from this perspective here, is notice how all of a sudden I'm corkscrewing my back. My hip comes up, right? So I'm not necessarily getting any more movement in my hips, right? My lower back's making up for that, right? So again, we're focusing just on that hip mobility, right? And that's where the hands on the hips come in, belly button drawn in. I'm gonna engage my core. And this is one way to even make it a little bit more advanced, right? I'm picking my knees up engaging my tummy, right? Good. And every time I come in and out of this movement, it's just a little bit easier, right? That's so crazy. I never felt this one before either. This is like starting to work, I feel like. Yeah, all right, so we're moving on. Or now we're just gonna let our legs just open up, right? So nice, easy groin stretch. So you guys heard me uh, in the beginning of today's session talk about like the, the, how muscles are woven. And depending on how they're woven, right, they're gonna have different functions, right? So uh, some muscles are meant for range of motion and like strength, other ones are woven tightly and made for endurance, right? So the groin one's an interesting one because if I just sat in this position, when I go to release, I'm gonna feel like a little bit of pain. Like, oh, wow, that was maybe a little bit too much. So with this one here, we just wanna be able to back out just ever so slightly now and again. You know, just every 10, 15 seconds, you know, just pull out, right? And then just fall back into it, right? And um, yeah, this is a good one. So this is not a strength. Um, you were saying some muscles are used for strength, others for Like for instance, my- What about this side? I would say, just because of the nature of the hips, I would say range of motion, right? And this one is definitely not a strength-based muscle. I would say, I would say range of motion because ideally we're able to move this ball and socket joint like completely, right? The shoulder's also a ball and socket joint, the range of motion that we have through the shoulder. So unfortunately through like life, things get tight and that the hips don't move as much as they should, right? So, yeah, groin. All right, moving on. Uh, Mike, this would be good for you. All right, so now I'm gonna get into my hurdler stretch, okay? Um, so here I puff my chest up, I have my right foot at my left knee, right? My toes are pointed straight up toward the ceiling, right? And I'm just gonna drape my torso over my leg, right? And if I start to feel this stretch coming back of the knee or into the joint, I'm gonna back off just a bit, right? And I'm even gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna reach around my foot and I'm gonna tuck my chin into my chest and I can feel this stretch come all the way through like my shoulder, my back, my lats, almost a little bit my lower back. As I straighten out my leg, I'm exaggerating that. And since a lot of these stretches are familiar to me, I can push them a bit more, you know? 
if those of you who are just joining on, you're having a hard time getting into these positions that I'm getting into, you know, again, like Sarah, Sarah's testament here, just being consistent and practicing has allowed her body just to develop the routine, develop the ability, right? And for those of you who have like these fitness goals of, I don't know, what are, what are people's fitness goals these days? Oh man, I think it's all over the place, yeah. right? I mean, for, for me, uh, they're just basically to not feel so out of shape all the time. Yeah. Just getting faster, stronger, being able to go a little harder, but understanding how that recipe should look, yeah. which is what you're kind of describing. So bit. I'm glad you brought up the recipe, right? Because let's say if you're, if you're getting back into working out, right? Spring's coming. Everyone's like, you know, wanting to get in shape for the summer because you're wearing less clothes, right? right? Um, people are going to start to work out more, right, than they were, right? And typically what happens when people work out more, um, that in, the intensity is also more. And since you haven't been active and you don't have that fitness level to do more intensity, yeah. right, like, it's, that's not good. So right. it's, remember, it all comes down to being consistent, right? So I want you guys to be able to do something every day, whether it's walk, whether it's stretch, whether it's just mobility stuff, work in the garden, whatever, but you have to do something every day and doing stuff like this is a nice training day, but without the intensity, without that impact, without like the body being able to like, you're just shocking your system again so it's not allowed to recover. More isn't better, right? Yeah. More, more isn't better. And let's just say, oh, I walk my 10,000 steps every day. Right. You know, that's You're good. You know, maybe that was good for you initially. Right. right. But at one point, hopefully that became easier for you. And that recipe that was there initially that might have helped you get some success is not the same recipe that's going to work for you uh, further down the road. OK, so I'm switching again here. This time I'm going to go into more the advanced version. Right. So, again, now I have one leg behind. I don't know if you guys can see that. What's up, Chris? You. Yeah. All right, so nice, easy groin stretch, right? Um, I would say probably, I don't know how this, yeah, this feels pretty good. Yeah. So, um, and for those of you who uh, can find these positions pretty easy and you don't feel like you're doing much, you're not getting much out of it, like, let's say you're already really flexible in a certain area. Like, why should I stretch that? It's not even a bother. I mean, that's totally fine. Maybe that area doesn't need to be stretched. Maybe that area doesn't need any work. Maybe you should be focusing on something different rather than like a ball and socket joint that you're already really flexible at. By pushing that flexibility even further, you're potentially putting that joint at risk. So I used to, uh, back in the day when I was, you know, back in the day, back in the day when I was, you know, you know, Johnny Trainer. You know, I used to have a, uh, a yoga instructor refer his yoga clients to me because they were almost so flexible that he was concerned about their joint integrity. Like they didn't have, they, they could have blown their shoulder out or their hip out because the joints were just so mobile. Muscle is what's gonna keep those joints in place, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, you don't want to be like point. too flexible, right? It's this constant balance of, more isn't necessarily better. So yeah. it would be really surprising to me that anybody really wouldn't need this, even if you were super flexible. Unless, yeah. Are there people that are just super... I mean, I guess I don't get it. Like so remember, when I, when I design a training program, it's balance, flexibility, endurance, mm -hmm. strength, mobility, and nutrition, and also recovery, right? So um, that recipe just might be different for somebody else who's coming from that background. Oh. See. You know, yeah. so we're still Got like, it. and it's let's totally just say, for instance, that okay. that yogi, yeah. they probably like yoga. That's what's yeah. going to be easy for right. them to do because they always seem to manage to get it in, right? It's part of like their routine, right. but they need to learn how to incorporate those other things, right? right? So, my job as the you know, prescriber, the, <laughs> yeah, the the trainer, the coach, yeah. right? The um, is to look at your week and help you basically figure out how you can better spend your time right so and sometimes it's maybe it's just like food prep maybe maybe it's um learning how to like uh schedule your week you know maybe it's and again it's different for everyone 
right? How are we looking on time? We are three o'clock. Three o'clock. Look at that, and we're done. Yeah, so, that was good. Um, good so again, um, uh, just to kind of bullet point some of the things I talked about today, right? We talked about getting your body to learn how to remember being flexible, right? So it's some massage, sports massage, you know, a little rubbing of the muscle to bypass that muscle spindle, right? Uh, then you're gonna stretch it, and then you're gonna train it. That's how your body remembers that. Oh, so it would be really cool if we, on Wednesday we could do those more, but go a little more intense into the workout. Ooh. I like that. There we go. So Wednesdays yeah. are our hard days. Well, I guess Monday comes first. Yeah, so we can we do, do that too. Monday. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. I mean, I think like, you know, again, like a, we have a Wednesday is our hard day. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't want that hard day, you just bring that intensity down on that scale of one to 10. Right. You know, okay. you can do like any intense exercise, right. but bring that intensity down to like a two, right? Yeah. So you can do your lunges, but maybe you don't lunge so low. Maybe you don't jump lunge. Maybe, you know, like, so again, I like, you know, we're doing this three days a week, right? So we can just bring that level of one to 10 down. So you gotcha. can still be involved. The body can learn it. You can get where that feeling is. Right. You know, like last time that we trained, um, I was pretty fatigued coming into it, yeah. but I could feel what muscles I was working very quickly, yeah. right? And my, because I was so tired, my scale of one to 10 literally just dropped down to like, I got to my seven like really quick. Mm -hmm. And days that I'm recovered and feeling great, that seven is pushed further out. So that's why I like also that training on that scale of one to 10. Yeah, it's perfect. You know? I like it. All right, so uh, lots of information. I love fitness theory. Um, it's been really good for me to kind of like do these, you know, Facebook live uh, classes because um, it's not that I just like to listen to myself talk. Right. You know, well, it, it's very educational. <laughs> yeah, it, um, it's good info. Yeah, and again, it's uh, fitness is all about you figuring out how your body reacts to the things that you do to it and how all like your world, right, wherever you are, how that spills into your fitness goals, you know. Um, and for me, it's just constantly evolving as my schedule changes as the weather is limiting my outside time and inside time like what can i do to fill my bucket right to scratch the itch but also make sure that i'm physically capable so when it comes time for me to keep up with the buddies on some big mountain bike ride that i'm there you know and i'm not the weak link and i'm not taking myself so far into the red that i'm risking myself getting injured right. you know train every day yeah. all right thanks, thanks guys appreciate it say bye sarah